Hi guys, so um, it has been the longest, longest, longest time that I have not posted a video on YouTube. Primarily because life got a little bit busy and I've just been using um, other social media platforms like Instagram and Facebook and Twitter um, a lot more than YouTube. So I was looking back, the last video I did was 2017. It was super poor quality. It was super poor quality in terms of the like the camera or whatever. And also how I sounded or like what I was talking about. It was it was like me stumbling all over the place. Um, and then I rolled back and I took a look at the ones in 2015, 14. They were kind of okay, like I was just doing some lyrics things, um, like changing canto pop songs into English lyrics and um, and kind of covering it um, and singing for it, them, them. But um, yeah, that's kind of, sorry, what did I do with my chin? Anyway. Um, yeah, so the reason why I've kind of had this whole hiatus is because life has gotten busier ever since 2017. Um, 2018, January, I started working at HBU, which was a really, really good gig. Um, so I moved from, you know, just teaching um, English as academic purpose for academic purposes um, and business English and Eventually, I started to get to teach the literature class um, in the department, so and also creative writing in the department. So, yeah, I got um, very busy um, and interesting, so that's good. Um, and I also got to do some volunteer work, so um, that was all good. It was all good. And my personal life also got busy. Um, I had to plan a wedding. Um, I had to. Uh, I wouldn't say had to, but <laughs> we, we got pregnant um, kind of at the probably best time, right before we knew COVID was going to go into a full-blown pandemic. So, um, and then after that, obviously taking care of the baby. But um, what was constant and what I'm trying to segue into um, while I'm doing this video is that um, during this time, I have not stopped. I, I should say I've, I've sh did not stop editing my novel. I think the the writing of the novel itself, like I finished my first draft um, in 2016. So I started this draft um, in 2012, late 2012. Um, my first, um, I think, the novel that I really wanted to finish. Previously, I've started novel projects, but they I didn't really finish them. This one, I really knew that, okay, it's a subject that I really want to talk about. It's a theme I really want to talk about. And so I started in late 2012, um, and then I finished writing, because I, on and off, I was doing, I was working um, at one point, and then I was also doing grad school and working at one point. So. Um, yeah, it, it, it took me four years to finish the first draft itself. Woo, sounds like a lot, a uh, long time. But I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm happy how it all organically just kind of worked out. Um, uh, and yeah, so after that, um, by the end of 2016, um, I would say, mid, yeah, I started to edit it. I would say I used roughly a year and a half, year and a half to really edit it, go through it, um, and not just like proofreading in terms of, you know, grammar and um, spell checks and all of that, um, like the whole copy edit side, but also like the developmental side that everything is um, cohesive, everything is logical, like readers, you know. Um, Anyway, uh, so that happened, and then I started pitching. I started trying to pitch, yeah, to uh, um, at the end of 2017 and beginning of 2018. Uh, but then that kind of enters that cycle where 
I pitch, I get rejected, I pitch again, I edit, I pitch, I edit, I pitch, I edit. Um, a lot of the times the rejections are very just formal, uh, a form, what we call a form rejection, which is just we're not interested, um, it's a subjective industry, all the best. But sometimes I would get these really personal um, feedback, which I love. I love those saying that, oh, maybe you want to change the narration this way or the voice this way, or I was really drawn into the premise of the character, but it didn't work out here or there. Anyway, um, every time I hear some of that, I put it into the editing process. Uh, bear in mind, this is when I'm still working <laughs> full time and um, also having kind of uh, trying to have like a balanced uh, work life um, situation. So um, yeah, so basically between <clears throat> I guess 2018 until now, um, so that's what, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, five-ish years of pitching. <clears throat> I know that sounds a lot, but <clears throat> um, it almost feels like, and probably some of you who know vaguely know me um, would know that this has always been my dream. I've always wanted to perfect it. And um, I was at one point really stubborn about, okay, I'm just going to pitch to literary agents. I'm just going to pitch to... Actually, I don't even pitch to publishers that much because publishers usually are adamant about going through literary agents, which is what you can probably say is the gatekeeper of good literature. So um, yeah, I've been spending uh, basically the past five-ish years pitching. So f yeah, it's been a 10 year, almost 11 year project. And that's why I kind of feel like, oh, I might as, I like, I've worked on it enough. I've invested the amount of energy and I just want to try and see where I'm going with this. So I decided um, I'm going to do the whole KDP um, self-publishing process. So if you're not familiar with that, it's the Kindle Direct Publishing. So Kindle Direct Publishing makes it really easy to publish on um, Kindle, obviously. And also they will help you with the um, print side of the uh, self-publishing process and um, basically I just need to the only thing is I need to find a graphic designer to do the print um, cover I actually did uh, a very basic um, ebook uh, 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 cover myself on Canva it was pretty easy to use um, and it's actually published already now on uh, Kindle um, so I have that already, but um, I'm in the process of finish like hiring someone to do the uh, cover for the print book. And um, once that process is done, uh, I would be doing the whole um, print part as well. Um, and essentially KDP, what they do is um, for paperback is um, let's say for example, like the book is like, you know, um, $10. Um, part of it, they would take like maybe $2 or $3, I can't really remember, but basically they will take part of the cost into the printing. So obviously, you know, the pages need money and the printing machine and all that, shipping and all that. So, but I think shipping like the customer. Um, pays uh, part of that but anyway um, in short uh, so I share royalties and printing costs with them um, but the ebook is much easier the ebook is um, yeah I just share royalties with them in which um, I do get 70% of it and um, I'm happy that way um, obviously the dream is to get um, the book into Indigo, Chapters, um, Barnes and Nobles, all of that, but that's like, it's, it's hard, it's not easy. I've been spending five years doing it. 
Um, I'd like to feel that I got better with the writing, but at times I, I kind of doubt. I, I feel like I have rewritten things so many times in so many ways that sometimes I'm thinking, oh, should I go back to that? But anyway, as my husband said, um, I've already spent this much time doing it, um, probably overthinking about it, so I might as well just go ahead and do this. And yes, this is now a pretty long video, 10 minutes, 30. <laughs> um, so basically, A, that's why I'm doing this YouTube video, um, explaining to friends and family why I'm doing this. Um, and what's coming your way? What's coming your way is the, once I have like, basically actually the ebook is ready to go. Um, I've done a free promotion for some um, beta readers that will write some reviews for me. But basically, hopefully over this um, Mother's Day weekend that I would be able to um, give my friends a discount. So um, basically, right now the book is on the ebook because the ebook is the only thing that's available now. The ebook is now eight ninety nine US dollars, uh, ten ninety nine Canadian, um, and I'd be doing a five ninety nine um, American and um, seven ninety nine. Um, for uh, Canadian for my friends um, over this Mother's Day and so after Mother's Day I'm going to I haven't decided yet maybe one or two weeks after Mother's Day I'll see how sales grow is but basically that's gonna be like the time frame for the discount and um, yeah if you are a book nerd which I know a lot of my friends are go ahead and Give it a read um, if you have Kindle. Unfortunately, I'm so I'm so sorry. I don't. Uh, I haven't figured out how to do Kobo yet. Um, I I think eventually I'm gonna have to learn how to do that, but I haven't got the time to do that yet. Um, so yeah. Uh, what was I saying? Yes. So there's gonna be Kindle. Um, if you don't have Kindle. Um, I guess you'll have to like wait for the paper um, paperback um, which hopefully um, my graphic designer will come back next week and uh, to me and we'll see how that process goes so yeah if you are a bookworm and you have Kindle um, go ahead and give it a try um, or if you have friends and uh, yeah, family that might be interested in a. Oh yeah, I should I should talk about what this what the the, the premise is about. It's basically um, a contemporary uh, fiction. Uh, it started um, as the 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 early days, like 2012 iteration was basically. I was imagining it to be a rom com, um, but then it kind of um, I wanted to sap in some um like themes about identity themes about um you know a community and city like on a more macro level and um yeah it got a little um yeah i'm not gonna say too much i don't want to spoil things but the premise is that the protagonist has a, a past that she would like to um, kind of evade from or um, have a second chance at it, if you may. And um, so uh, she relocates herself and um, yeah, try something new, which um, kind of created some family conflict. But then, um, so as you kind of peel out the book, you would kind of find out what the secret is, how it all panned out. Um, while she's while whilst uh, she tries to um, yes uh, get a second chance in life and um, and uh, yeah, some of 
the parts are kind of light and bright. Some of the parts are a little gloomy, um, but then you kind of, or at least I as a writer came out um, kind of inducing some sort of um, bittersweet inspiration towards the end, if I may. So that's kind of what's what the premise is. Uh, I will link in um, the yeah uh, description box below um, the Amazon link so you can actually read the synopsis there if you're really uh, yeah interested and feel free to share that link with family and friends um, if you are really really uh, interested um, after you've made the hard work of actually reading the whole book because I don't even know how good it is but if you've actually read the whole book and um, you have the time uh, yeah it would I would really appreciate if if you write a review uh, however long or short you know um, I, I think that's that's the most organic way of getting readers to me so what I've learned in terms of this kind of publishing world and you know getting traction is that you just need to find the right audience um, not everyone is going to love what you write but there will be some people who love what you write um, it's like finding a literary agent i just need to know that agent what the agent likes and pitch to that agent not all agents out there i wouldn't you know pitch three thousand agents uh, i mean so far i probably pitched like i don't know 200 agents over the five years but anyway um i digress i digress it's 16 minutes now. I'm going to end this. I'm going to end this. Um, anyway, I'm going to say the very cliched thing that is said on YouTube. Can you guess what it is? Can you guess what it is? It's basically, yeah, um, subscribe and like if you have time for that three seconds. Um, then yeah, go ahead. <laughs> if not, if you hate me f uh, for this video, you didn't like it, that's okay. You don't have to like keep doing this, but yeah, peace out, peace out.